Hey everyone, God bless you and a very happy feast of our Father among the Saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople. What a beautiful day it is. My reflection today is entitled The Great Reset. The Great Reset. That language may be familiar to you now since it's being used uh, by a wide array of uh, sources today uh, in reflection upon the crises that have uh, taken place in the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, it's being used by some scholars, some global elites. It's also being used by uh, journalists and cultural commentators in response to the global elites. I found the, the title of The Great Reset very fascinating, and I decided to read up on this, as I'm sure lots of people are, especially priests all over the world as they see the impacts on their people uh, and their communities of the coronavirus and the actions that have been taken about it. I read this book recently. Um, it's called The COVID-19 Great Reset, and it was uh, published by two uh, influential economists. Uh, one is a professor, Professor Klaus Schwab. Uh, he is a professor at the University of Geneva and uh, the founder and executive director of the um, World Economic Forum. And he wrote it together with a French um, uh, doctor of economics named Thierry Mallory. Uh, it's a fascinating book, uh, and it, it is, was written right in the middle of uh, the outbreak of the coronavirus, so about maybe three, four months in. And the, th the principle behind the book is that the, the coronavirus provides us an opportunity uh, for a grand uh, cultural, societal, global reset, that there are many things that are taking place that have altered uh, society permanently, no matter where you live. And these authors are trying to guide the way to how we should think about um, how not to go back to how we were and how we should go forward. So they uh, lay out this proposal uh, in a number of areas. So they have great reset subsections or what I would call reset subsets. They have an economic subset. Uh, they have a global subset an environmental, geopolitical, technological, and they make suggestions in all of those areas uh, about how leaders, uh, important leaders in all countries, uh, international global leaders should uh, encourage and effect permanent change. So, for instance, in the area of economics, they point out that the response, almost universal response in developed countries to the, um, the outbreak of the coronavirus is an economic policy that is absolutely unsustainable. Massive stimulus uh, that is throwing countries into significant debt together with a policy of lockdowns that brought about uh, massive unemployment. Uh, and they are going, they suggest certain alterations in these uh, fiscal policy trajectories on how to be able to um, uh, weather the future. Uh, so that is just an area that they're focused on, which is this whole area of economics. They also have a social, a social section, social reset section, emphasizing the fact that uh, tremendous unrest has uh, been brought forth uh, in Western countries as a result of the coronavirus and the implications of the, the lockdown that, that took place and what that means for people's lives. They also point out uh, the sad reality that, that disparities, especially economic disparities, have grown, uh, that the wealthier, the wealthy have become wealthier during the coronavirus uh, and those who are impoverished have become even poorer. Uh, and they have some suggestions about uh, what the cultures can do, what cultural leaders can do, political leaders can do uh, about that. They focus also on the geopolitical front. Uh, these influential authors who are trying to set the agenda for uh, the UN and others are big advocates of globalization. They think that national nationalism and uh, a return to nation state sovereignty is a tremendous hindrance in dealing with uh, outbreaks of uh, viruses like COVID-19. 
So they use, they're using their platform to promote the strengthening of international organizations and as key uh, to the future, less localism, greater internationalism. They also focus on technological, uh, technological resets. This may be one of the, the most important portions of the book where they note that uh, this, the coordinated response to coronavirus uh, in many countries is very much dependent upon the digital revolution and that the digital information age is only becoming more and more influential and extending its tentacles into more aspects of our lives, which they see uh, probably as a very good thing. And they make all sorts of suggestions about how uh, we, if we allow ourselves to be guided uh, in the digital age, by our interconnectivity, that this can really help. And of course, they suggest all sorts of things like uh, that are basically surveillance societies, contact tracing, digital health passports, um, less face-to-face -face human contact, uh, more working from home, less travel, far fewer restaurants and pubs and concerts and you know, social meetings online school. <laughs> I can't speak uh, in any authoritative way about most of those things, and I'm not trying to. I'm just letting you know what uh, the Great Reset is uh, and, and how it's being used, uh, except in that last area of education. I can't speak about that because I have many decades of, part of being involved professionally in education, and that online education is a nightmare, a nightmare. And uh, the idea that um, one of the consequences of the coronavirus should be less in-person schooling and more online schooling. I couldn't disagree more about that. So those are the, those are the great areas of reset that they articulate in the book. They also deal with some what they call minor resets with regards to business and industry. I won't talk too much about that. And, and then the area that concerns me most as a priest is the section on individual resets where they talk about, quote, redefining our humanity uh, they, they document the incredible mental health crisis and uh, personal relationship crisis and crime crisis that uh, has followed the lockdown measures of our governments and the outbreak of coronavirus. And they make some suggestions about how to cultivate uh, well-being. What I would point out simply is that in this uh, rather large book, uh, from beginning to end, and even in the section on uh, individual resets and health and well-being, there is not a single reference anywhere in the entire book to God, faith, religion, church, nothing. And that is an important uh, lacuna to point out. The, the absolutely purely secular response by these extremely influential uh, global elites from the World Economic Forum, the complete absence of God and any reference to the transcendent, uh, really eviscerates the significance of many of their proposals, makes them all very relativistic. And, and it's towards that that I'd like to, uh, to direct your thoughts now when we discuss the Great Reset. The Great Reset is uh, being used by these elites as uh, the goal that they would like to take w the world in. It's also be being mentioned now by other important people for instance, uh, if you've, any of you have read the open letters that have been written to President Trump by the former papal nuncio from the United States, uh, Archbishop Carlos, Carlo Vigano, who has uh, been brought to pro prominence in the last few years by his re resolve to expose corruption in the Catholic Church, especially corruption around the, the hiding of high-level uh, molestation and crimes uh, amongst cardinals and bishops. I met uh, Archbishop Vigano some years ago when he was the papal nuncio here. I've actually met him on a number of occasions. He hosted myself and a, a small group of people uh, at the, his papal nunciature in Washington, D.C. Uh, and he also would come to the West Coast a number of times to speak at the West Coast Walk for Life at the invitation of the uh, deeply respected uh, Archbishop Salvatore Cordilion in uh, San Francisco. And he would usually read a prayer and say a few words of encouragement. 
But Cardinal uh, uh, Archbishop Vigano wrote to uh, President Trump, and in his most recent letter, he addresses the issue of the Great Reset and makes all sorts of affirmations about it being um, uh, of a definite plan of the anti-human, anti-church elites who are trying to promote the, the agenda of the Antichrist, and he describes what this Great Reset is about. I can't say much about that. I'm only pointing out that this language is uh, becoming more more common, the Great Reset. And I'd like to suggest that no matter what this is about, and I can't speak authoritatively at all about any of this, Great Reset, uh, the Great, great Reset plans, but no matter what it is, I'll tell you this, that there is and has been a Great Reset, and it belongs to God. It doesn't belong to politicians. It doesn't belong to rich elites who think they know best what's best for the world and who never talk about God. There has been uh, a great reset in the world and there will be a great, re great reset to come. And let me speak a little bit about that. First, you might remember uh, the original great reset. Uh, at the fall of man, when the entire cosmos collapsed in response to Adam and Eve's sin and their act of cosmic treason, uh, it set the human race on a course of corruption that reaches its Pinnacle in Genesis chapter 6, where Moses writes that uh, the, th the intents of the thoughts of man's heart were only evil continually. The whole human race had become corrupted. It's as though what happened to Eve had now spread like the ultimate virus to every human being, and we had reached just a climax of our uh, sinfulness. And the result of that was a great reset for sure, and it's called the great deluge the flood, which is described in Genesis 7 through 9. God sent a flood on the earth and literally pruned back the vine of the human race down to one family, starting again as a second Adam uh, and Eve was the patriarch Noah and his family. In fact, God repeated to Noah the same words that he gave to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. This was a great reset. The Lord God did not, uh, or rather after that great reset, set the rainbow in the sky as a covenantal promise that he would not do this again, but that he would provide stability and the consistency of the season so that mankind could prosper uh, with some confidence and invest his life. But that was a, a, a massive great reset for the human race. From that moment, uh, all of history coursed towards the fullness of times. When God reset uh, the human destiny by, in the fullness of time, sending forth his son, the Lord Jesus Christ from heaven, to become incarnate of the most pure Virgin Mary in Bethlehem. God becoming man, heaven and earth joining together, the Almighty bowing low to take up the human race in our misery and reset our possibilities and our realities. This is the great reset, the gospel, the incarnation, the joining of heaven and earth in the God-man, the Theanthropos, our Lord Jesus Christ. He came, he conquered the greatest threat to humankind, which is not a virus. Uh, it is, in fact, sin, death, the devils, Satan himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, our great champion, vanquished them all plundered hell, and then took humanity up into the heavens and planted it at the right hand of his Father and sent forth his Holy Spirit, commissioning the church to bring the good news of his great reset, of his triumph over the dominance of death and sin uh, to the whole world so that men and women could hear the incredible news uh, that they were not going to be trampled by death for all eternity, that they did not need to remain under the dominion of Satan, and the corruption of uh, life dominating sin and the depression and despair that comes from that. But in fact, they could even become joined a part of the body of the glorified God man, Jesus Christ, our savior, and be illumined that their darkness could be replaced by his light, that their sinfulness could be covered over by his gracious forgiveness and the atonement of his precious cross. And that great reset we have been promoting to the ends of the earth. 
by his commission to announce this great reset of God, the triumph of the good news uh, over the bad news. This is what's been going on for the last 2,000 years in anticipation of the final great reset of God, which is the great judgment. At that moment, every man, woman, and child who has ever lived will stand before the great throne of God and will make an accounting for their life, for every thought, word, and deed that they ever thought, ever have thought, conceived, or done. And then those who have done good will enter into a resurrection of life, and those who have done evil into a resurrection of judgment. And God will be all in all, and evil will be no more. This is the final great reset that we look for, brothers and sisters. It's the one that really counts. So whatever happens now, whatever might be in the minds of these or those political leaders or global elites, for us Christians, no matter, no matter, we know what the great reset really is, God's great reset, and we have put our hope in the Lord. We've experienced a great reset in our own lives, and we're anticipating the final great reset, which is to come. And may it come soon to the glory of his name. Amen. Patristic Nectar Publications is pleased to present Good Deeds, Cultivating a Life of Virtue, a seven-part lecture series. These lectures expound the place of good works in the salvation of the Christian, the nature of virtues and vices, and the traditional means for cultivating virtue in the Christian life. St. John of Damascus, in his text On the Virtues and the Vices in the Philokalia, writes that every man is said to be made in the likeness of God as regard his imitation of God through virtues and godlike actions. The study and cultivation of virtue is the quest both to love God and also to become a true human being. For these and other available titles, please visit our website at patristicnectar.org.